Okay, so welcome back AP Stat students. So we're now gonna talk about how do we know if there's really a difference or not. And so what we're really looking for is this key term called statistically significant. And this is when an observed effect is so large that it could rarely occur by chance. So observed effect is so large, there's such a big difference that it could barely occur by chance. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use probability and we're gonna look at probability a lot more in chapter five. Um, to determine if our results are statistic statistically significant. For example, if there's only a 1% chance of getting the results from the experiment that we got, we call that statistically significant. If we did not get these results by chance, that means that there are true, real results. And again, we're, we're going to really jump on that more later, but I also want to tell you that our key number that we're going to be looking at is if there's a less than 5% chance. If there's a less than 5% chance that that would happen, then we are gonna go ahead and say that that's statistically significant, that these are true and real results. So our activity is going to actually look at a study and we're gonna look at, could this have happened by chance? And so we're gonna do a little experiment of what does it look like if it doesn't, if our treatment really didn't matter? So to do that, we're looking at What's more distracting, talking on a cell phone while driving or talking to a passenger? So these are the two key things we're looking at, talking on a cell phone and talking to a passenger. And so what they did is they did a study and they found out that 15 people who were driving did not stop at a certain rest stop. So that'd be like us here in Palmer, we're driving to Girdwood to go skiing or something like that. Or we're driving, maybe we're going down to Kenai to go fishing. And everyone who drives down to Kenai, they always stop at Girdwood. They always stop at Girdwood. And it's kind of like our last chance to really get gas before we go through the pass and all that sort of stuff. So let's say they're driving to Kenai to go fishing and they're supposed to stop at Girdwood. But they get so distracted by either the person in the car or the person on the cell phone and they determine that, and they just don't stop. They miss the turnoff and they either have to turn back or whatever. So we're looking at who's more distracted. And we found that 33 people stopped at Girdwood like they were supposed to, but 15 people did not stop. So what we're doing is we are going to play with cards. And if you're in class, that's exactly what we did is we played with cards. If you're not in class, then this is something you should try on your own, grabbing some index cards or sticky notes. Let me see if I can, oops, my document camera is not on, but I'm going to turn this on. And I'm going to show you that we have 48 cards to represent the 48 people in the experiment. Here we go. It's starting to load. And you can see my lovely desk, not lovely at all, but that's okay. And so we've got 48 cards and you can't see right now, but haha, -ha, there it goes. Some of the cards say pass. That means they pass the Girdwood exit. They do not stop. Now, some of the cards say stop, which means they stopped at the exit. In our stack of cards, we have 15 who did not stop. So 15 who passed and 33 who stopped. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up all of our cards. You can shuffle them however you want, blah, blah, blah. And we are gonna randomly divide them up into two groups. And so we're treating this like, it does not matter if they had a passenger in the car or if they were talking on their cell phone. It's gonna be the same no matter what. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And it's still hard to tell. So we've got a passenger group, we've got a cell phone group, and we're just gonna divvy up the cards. So we're gonna put half the cards in the passenger group, one, and we're gonna put half the cards in the cell phone group. And we're just gonna divvy them up. And you can do this however you want. You can go back and forth, or you can do 24 and one. As long as it was mixed up to begin with, it's totally random. Okay, you're probably getting tired of watching me do this, but you get the idea. So we're gonna get my 24 cards and then we're gonna count how many 
did not stop in each group. And we're going to record that. And then we're going to put together all of our information as a class. So we get what we call a sampling distribution. Okay? So I take my stack and I'd figure out how many did not stop. So this one didn't stop. 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 And you're just counting how many didn't stop. And you'd record it on your paper. So we would say, okay, we had one, two, three, four, five, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people. So eight people, I'm going to try and write with my mouse here. Nope, I'm going to write with my finger. So eight people in the passenger group did not stop. Eight. <laughs> and then everyone else who didn't stop were in the cell phone group. So if there are 15, that means seven didn't stop here. Then you would take your cards, maybe. Let's see if this, okay. Then you're going to take your cards, you're going to mix them up, and you're going to do it again. So you're just randomly mixing it up because, again, it doesn't matter. This is just looking what would happen by chance. So this is giving us what we would call a probability distribution. What would happen just by chance? So we mix them up. We do it again. We're going to do this 10 times. Now, when we did this in class, we got certain results. And our results looked like this. So we had, hold on. So we had eight groups that did this 10 times. So we have 80 total. And we found that the max we had was 20. So we went by twos. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And we found that we had four times, we had four people that did not stop with the cell phone. So this is cell phone, no stop. So four times we got it where four people did not stop. Now five times we got where five people did not stop. And for six, we had 11 times six people did not stop. And then for seven, we had 20. Oof. So 20 times we got seven people that did not stop. And then 20 times we got eight people did not stop. And then eight times we got nine people that did not stop. And nine times we had 10 people that did not stop. And then for 11, we got 11 twice. And then we got 13 once. And so this was just by chance. Now the real results were that 12 people did not stop when they were talking on their cell phone. So what we're going to look at is what's the probability that 12 or more people did not stop? So 12 or more. And it looks like we had one time. One time out of 80 random trials, would that have happened by chance? Now, if we calculate that, one divided by 80 is 0 0.0125. Which, if I move my decimal, is a 1.25% chance that that would happen just randomly. Just randomly, we'd have that many people not stop when talking on their cell phones, which gives me evidence. This is very rare that this would happen by chance. So that means that cell phones are actually more distracting. So these results, yes, they're statistically significant. This is less than a 5% chance. And 5% chance is what we use in the court of law to say it's statistically significant. So yes, it's less than a 5% chance. Cell phones are more distracting.
than talking to a person in the car or than a passenger. This is good evidence that that is true because it is very rare that that would have just happened by chance, that we just got those results. Now, it's not impossible because you can see that we got one case of it happening by chance, but it is rare. And that's the idea. So rare, such a big difference that it is so rare that it would happen by chance that it means that this must be true. It must be true that cell phones are more distracting. Now, if we had it on the other end, then we had evidence that cell phones are not as distracting because we'd be on the low end of that. It'd be very rare for that to happen on that end. And so this is where we start talking about statistically significant. And just because there's a difference based on the spread and how likely it is to occur would tell us, is it real evidence or is it not real evidence? And that's what the layperson has a hard time distinguishing. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make you good users of information and data to look at how does this really work?